it going. Now I'm a little bit disturbed by this book because I didn't mean it to look so Disney. It really wasn't my intention. And actually the papers that I've used for this one, just to show that I'm not doing Disney, are these really old Project Life ones that I found. So that's what I used. It's just, it, it looks like Disney, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, so uh, I've used six by six papers because we've all got a stash, haven't we, of six by six paper pads that we haven't got a clue what to do with. I certainly have. So I pulled out another one to use tonight and look what I've done. I've pulled out some that are six and a half inches. Doesn't matter. I'll manage. So this little book, I've seen this for years and years and years and years. I don't know who first designed it, no idea where it came from, but I've always thought it was really cute. And I, I, um, I took a guess, to be honest with you, uh, how to make this. So if it's wrong or you know a better way, tell me. This is just how I managed to do it. But I've used um, a hair elastic to, 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 for my closure, which I thought looked rather nice. You can always put a little um, charm on there as well. But the book basically opens up. Um, in a bit of a, a fan shape here and um, we've got an accordion style binding down the bottom and each of these little um, folders here has got a, um, a tag in it so that actually Charmaine you can help with this that occurred to me that this might be a great little book for people who do things like you know stamping or mixed media this might be really really fun you could maybe make it out of um, backgrounds that you've already made or you could just make it out of plain cardstock and then decorate it afterwards it just occurred to me that it might be um, quite a versatile little book for us to make so like I said I've no idea where the original one came from but um, this is my version of it really so we'll see how it goes okay so right this book has eight of these little um, uh, pockets in it and that is where we are going to start so ladies grab your oh and gentlemen <coughs> sorry mark uh, <coughs> sorry sorry uh, grab your trimmers um, and your paper and what I want you to do first of all is I want you to cut and these are your pockets so think about what papers you want I want you to cut eight pieces hi Sue hi Julia I want you to cut eight pieces at six by four inches so it is typically the same size as a standard photo I am just gonna grab eight sheets I am not gonna put too much thought into this because if that happens I'm sunk I'm just gonna grab maybe not pink I'm just gonna grab some papers These are all pretty and right one two three how many have I got there one two three four five six seven eight so I want you to cut those all at six by four inches mm -hmm. now I managed to get glue on my um, trimmer earlier on so this might be fun keep all your bits because they're always great for decorating like for instance I didn't when I when I made my cover I didn't quite cover it as well as I thought I had so I had some of these bits left over which is what I used just to decorate round so it's always good to keep your your odds and ends of papers I think you never know what you might need them for Good for die cutting, stamping on, all sorts of things. So, decorating the floor. Decorating the floor. Yeah, yeah, decorating the floor. That's my favourite thing to do with them. So, you're cutting eight pieces at six by four inches. Is it still rainy with you in, um, it's Washington, isn't it, Christy? Hi Dee. Tracy, I love Kai's craft paper too. Don't use it as often as I should. 
but this is as old as the hills this is telegraph road i, I dread to think how many years old this this one is but it just shows we've all got those six by four i mean those six by six packs of paper in our stash that we've just had forever and it doesn't you never know what to do with them well i don't that's why i kind of like lots of little books from time to time just so i can use it up okay so that's all i'm going to cut for the moment you're going to need to trim her back in a bit oh everything's blowing away because i've got the fan on actually i'm a bit selfish because i've got the fan blowing on me and not on mark I sorry dear right so grab your scoreboard and what we're going to do is we're going to score on our six inch side first at half an inch and at three and a quarter inches just hold on a tick just let me just double check that's right just before I, I yeah it is yeah that's right so you're going to score on the six inch side at half an inch and three and a quarter inches scoot it round 90 degrees and i want you to score on the four inch side at half an inch so what you've got is this really rather weird grid shape okay you've got two intersecting score lines here and then you've got that one that's just off center okay your your what are in clear a4 popper envelopes color coordinated wendy if you if you tell me that that's your your six by six papers i will be mortified Where's right the are the off cuts Oh, that's still a bit too organised. Evening, Anne. Evening, Rosalind. Right, so we're scoring on the six inch side. These eight pieces are scored in exactly the same way. We're scoring at half an inch and we're scoring at three and a quarter inches. We're going to scoot round to the four inch side and sc scoot. Score at half an inch. And that is the same for all of them. So on the six inch side, score at half an inch three and a quarter inches and on the four inch side a half an inch okay now this one I'm going to do it that way around because I know I shouldn't and it's a bit naughty but I want I want that to show so I'm going to do it the wrong way around the other papers it doesn't matter so much I've never been one for following rules so half an inch three and a quarter Scoot it round 90 degrees and score at half an inch. Okay. And that's exactly the same on all eight. Half an inch, three and a quarter inches, half an inch on the four inch side. Okay. Let me just make sure I've got eight because counting's not my thing at the best of times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, right. Now I want you to grab a pair of scissors and you might find that using slightly longer scissors helps here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to mitre the corner of each one of these and they're all done in exactly the same way. I'm going to mitre the corner here where those two score lines intersect, where those two half inch score lines intersect. Now you can go straight across like that. I'm not the biggest fan in the world of doing it that way. So uh, I don't think Mel's here, but Mel always giggles when I say this, but we're going to do a bit of kinky mitering, okay? Which means that to make sure that when I fold these flaps over and they lie flat, I am going to snip up with my scissors at an angle up to where those two score lines intersect but instead of going straight across i'm going to just change the angle on my scissors slightly and cut it so that the mitre isn't directly straight it's actually got a bit of a kink to it okay so if you hear me go on about kinky mitering that's what i'm going on about now we're going to make another cut we're going to turn this round now well you might not do it the same way i think this is because i'm left-handed so i've got my mitered corner here and then I've got my other score line down here. 
on this bit here where I've already got a mitered bit I want to snip up to where that's those score lines intersect doesn't have to be perfect angles don't worry about that you're not going to see them so I've got my kinky mitre there and now I've just snipped up to where that corner is there to where those two score lines intersect and now I'm going to take my scissors and I am going to cut that bit of paper away so now what I've got is that piece of paper removed I've got my mitered corners here and here okay now I'm going to do that exactly the same on all of them so that you can see so here oh that's the one I did the other way around I've got my mitered corner up to there turn my scissors slightly so that's slightly out of out of line I'm going to chop that back down to there and I'm going to cut that off there so whichever way round you've done this you're going to end up with a flap that's got two mitered bits here and one there and then that bottom bit's been taken away okay are you following me all right okay so I've just mitered that corner I'm going to go up to that score line there and I'm going to cut that piece away okay now this is the one that I did the wrong way around but I'm still going to mitre the corner in exactly the same way take that off down to there here's me telling you left-handed but I use my scissors right-handed just to be completely difficult okay so you you all following this give me some feedback or are you all deep in craft land or are you giggling at Wendy and her kinky corners oh Oh yeah, could be, could be. Right, so all of these little taggy things, pockets, are done in exactly the same way. Oh. okay now we've got to make them into the pockets okay ellie i'll make you giggle now it's time for the big boner here's mine to make these pockets what we're going to do is we're going to fold up that flap there fold over that one there i'm going to make sure we've got a really nicely burnished edge oh this paper's a bit thin and then I'm going to fold this over. I've already got my score line, which will show me pretty much where it goes. But I just want to make sure that it lines up perfectly. So I've got a really, really nice together pocket. I'm just going to burnish that. So now, as you can see, I've got my little pocket. I'm going to pop some glue on those two flaps there. I'm not sure how much of this glue I've got left. Probably not a lot. I might have to open up the other one in a minute. Yeah. Let's can poke that. Oh yeah. Ugh. Ugh. This is because it's too hot. It's splodged everywhere. I hate it when that happens. Right. Hang on. I need to get rid of some of that. There's just too much. Ugh. For a crafter, I can't bear sticky fingers. I don't mind inky fingers. I can't bear sticky fingers. So I've just popped my glue on those flaps. And now I'm just going to make sure that that's glued down. So I've got my pocket. It's enclosed at the bottom. And it's enclosed at the side. And I've just got the hole at the top. Okay? And that's what we're going to do. Oh, there's one I haven't mitered. That was good. 
we're going to do that on all eight we want to fold up all eight of them so I'm going to fold up that flap there fold that one round and make sure that that lines up and gives me a nice crisp edge like that okay and now I'm going to glue that down oh my goodness oh I'm going to have sticky fingers now Ugh. oh I hate it oh right let's glue that down We might go over the hour a little bit tonight. I hope you're all cool with that. It won't be much, but it might be a little bit. Okay. Oh, this is the one that I wanted to keep pretty. There we go. Although, to be honest with you, you're not going to see a great deal of it. So it might have been a little bit. I agree, Liz. There really isn't anything worse than sticky fingers on your flaps. Sticky gussets aren't good if you're making a book. I'll tell you that much. See, I've been in this group too long now because you're starting to see the real me. I was so good. I'm so professional. Not a word out of place. And now look. Back to normal. Who knew paper crafting was so utterly filthy? I'm going to get kicked out now. Right. Nearly there. Oh, pink. Not my favourite. Hmm, I have to say, that isn't brilliant paper. It's, um, got like a gloss coating on it has not half cracked but could it be its age I'm definitely cracking okay nearly there Mel arrived. Oh, good. What were we talking about Mel for earlier? Oh, Mel, you've missed my kinky mitre ring. Kinky corners. We've, talk, we've, we've been talking about kinky corners and I said you'd be sorry to miss it. No, I'm not into pink either, Joan. It's not my favourite. But then again, sometimes I challenge myself to use it because, um, yeah, we all need a challenge, don't we? And I can always hide it behind the green, which I do like a lot. Naughty step. We need a naughty staircase, Heather. Right, OK. So now I've got my eight pockets. Okay, and I'm going to put those, I think I've got eight, I'm just going to double check, one, because I, I, I lose things, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay, so I'm going to put those to one side. 
Now, what I want to do next, which is probably what I should have done first, but it doesn't matter particularly, is I'm going to make the outside bit. Now, here's what I learnt. In this case, thinner is better. So I used super thin chipboard, um, grey board for mine. You could just use one big piece of um, card if you wanted I reckon you could use something like a cereal packet would actually be really really great um, for this uh, to you know to, to make the cover out of this because you don't want it too thick so I'm gonna carry on and use what I used earlier which was just um, some grey board that I got knocking about but it was quite a thin bit I think it's it's probably it's possibly even under one millimeter it actually is really really narrow so Grab your trimmer or your knife or whatever you're going to use and we're going to cut five pieces to make our cover we are going to cut them all at a width of three inches now I learned this last night it's better to pull it towards you than push it away now there's a proverb for you so we're gonna cut a three inch width okay and I need one piece that is three inches by three and a quarter inches. Yep. So one piece that's three by three and a quarter. One piece that is three by, every time, three by two inches. I want one piece that is three by four four and a quarter inches and then I want two pieces that are three by one inch no I don't a half an inch so these are three by half an inch you know what would be easier if I did it this way no I don't know Yeah, so three by a half. I've just done that the wrong way around, haven't I? Oh no, I have done it right. It is definitely the heat. Okay. Right, now, when I put mine together, because I was using six inch... Uh, wide paper um, I put it together in pieces rather than one whole piece of if we were using like 12 inches we could just use you know a, a one 12 by 12 inch piece of paper to um, you know to cover it in one go but I actually um, I did mine in several pieces so I'm going to do the same again tonight so you've got a choice now you can either put your card these bits directly onto the pattern paper or if you want to strengthen it a little bit I'm going to use some Tyvek now I've talked about Tyvek before it's this stuff that looks like paper feels like paper tastes like, taste, taste like paper no, you know? no it doesn't no, taste like paper but you can't tear it like paper all right it doesn't tear okay um, it's a remarkably strong piece of material they use it in house building um, but I just love it because uh, what it basically means is that I can open and close a hinge on a book as often as I like and it doesn't tear. It also helps, I think, with when it comes to um, papers cracking. I think it helps with that. So you don't have to use Tyvek, but I'm going to. If you're not going to use Tyvek, you just put this straight down onto the patterned papers um, that you're... You know that you're uh, you're going to use to decorate your book so we need to put these in a particular order now because lying this book down flat obviously it's a gatefold and we need to make sure that we're putting things in the right way so this first bit Sue said congrats on the new website oh thanks Sue yes I'm rather pleased with it let me just make sure I've done this right more what did I say to cut this one at? Three and a quarter. I think it should have been three and three quarters. 
it should i'm really sorry guys you know the first one i said cut at three and a quarter yeah. it should have been three and three quarters well, i can't read my own writing <laughs> it will work at three and a quarter it, it will absolutely work but i'm just going to do it that way and then it'll be exactly the same as the one I did previously but if you haven't got a lot of chipboard don't worry three it'll work just fine so this is three by three and three quarters and this is this bit here okay so that bit goes there then we've got one of the half inch pieces we've got the four and a quarter inch piece yep I measured that right and then through to the gatefold so I'm going to start with this piece of chipboard which is the one that is three by three and three quarters. What size was the Tyvek? The Tyvek, I've just cut a strip of A4 down to three inches. It's probably far too long at the moment, but we can work that out at the end. It's just, it's basically, it was the width that mattered. So I'm just going to glue that down onto the Tyvek now. So that's the front piece, which is three by three and three quarters. This is one of the half inch pieces, three by half an inch. And I'm going to put that down on the Tyvek now, but I'm going to make sure that I leave a bit of a gap. And the gap is going to be somewhere in the region of, of an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more. So you can see that I've glued it like that. OK, you need to leave a gap there because basically our book needs to be able to fold. That's why we leave uh, a gap. OK, so now we need to put the back piece on. We've put this piece on and this piece on. Oh, I've lost all my tags. Now we need to do this bit, which was the piece that was three by four and a quarter. So I'm just going to add that on. But once again, I'm going to leave that gap very important because otherwise, if it's too close together, our cover won't shut. OK, Um in, in, instead of Tyvek, you can just put this straight down onto your pattern paper, Nicola. You can say cover it in a plain cardstock and then add your pattern papers on afterwards. Just mat them like you might um, on a on an ordinary um, book that we make. You can use, I understand, you can use duct tape, but I haven't used it myself. You could use, I'm just trying to think what else you could use. What else could you use, Mark? You're the technical one. Uh, Tyvek's good. Tyvek's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or just do you know what? Even just cardboard, just some—I mean, cardstock, some thin cardstock, just to use it as a sort of like a guide, so that you can line up all the bits of your cover. Right. So. Let's pop that one down. That's the last bit which was three by two inches, I think, that one. So that's our cover, okay? This one is three, uh, three by three and three quarters, three by half an inch, three by four and a quarter, three by half an inch, three by two inches, okay? I've got Tyvek on the back, I'm not going to see it, and that will eventually, that will fold up to make our, our cover like that. OK, so now what I want to do is I actually want to put the pattern papers on my cover. Now, this is one of the few times when you will see me use double sided tape, um, because personally speaking, I think you get a much nicer finish on this bit with double sided tape than you do with wet glue. Now, I've got some super thick double sided tape, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to find my thin double sided tape, which I've lost. Oh, here it is. So I've just got some ordinary double sided tape. And what I'm going to do is work out where the gaps are behind my Tyvek. And I'm going to avoid those with the double sided tape. So I'm just going to put tape all the way down here. It doesn't have to be perfectly spaced. It just needs to avoid where the gaps are. Because I think personally 
that that has a bit of a bearing on when papers start to um, crack. I think somehow it pulls a little bit maybe on the double sided tape and that's why I try and avoid those bits. You can do it without the cat fur. I've even got any cats here tonight and I've still got cat fur in everything. They're all lying in our bathroom. Oh, they're all in the bath? I'm not in the bath, I'm not in the bath. Oh. Okay, so let's have a feel. Just trying to avoid those gaps. Okay, so what you can see here is I've got my double-sided tape on because I'm going to put I'm going to use that to put my um, paper on the cover, but I've avoided just about where those gaps are so that when my paper folds, it doesn't kind of pull it. Does that make sense? It does. Oh yes, but binding tape would be great, Joan. You're absolutely right. Insulation tape, Mary. Yeah, that would work too. It would actually just across where the um, where the gaps are. Right, so now I need to choose some papers for the cover. Let's have a look and see what I've got. I do like that spotty one. I do like a few spots. That blue one's nice too, but I need something a bit bolder. That would crack, I think, because it's glossy. Let's have a look. Yeah, that one might work. Okay, so I'm going to cut these at, well, the width is three inches, so I'm going to cut them about, I don't know, four and a half. well and I'll cut those down to match as we go right so now this is the bit on the front that's the top that is where I want to put that paper I think so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take off some of this double-sided tape And I'm going to lie this down on top. I want to make sure that that shows. So I'm going to lie that down and just really hope that I haven't. No, you see, I haven't. The worst thing you can do, I think, is actually um, put your papers down so that it finishes on one of the gaps. You don't want to do that. OK, so now I'm going to do the next one. Take off that double-sided tape. I think I do this really well for somebody who hasn't got any nails, she says. I'm now stuck. You've nailed it. I have nailed it. Okay. And I'm going to lie this one down joining it up there. I can always go over it later. Let's just make sure, oh, look at that. Look rather than judgment. Uh, I'm not gonna need as much of that. So I'm just gonna pop that down on there as well. Just line it up. And I'm just gonna cut that off there. It doesn't need to be perfect. But so this is my front of my book that'll be the inside of it but I'm just going to make sure that it's stuck down really well 
I'm just going to use my boner to make sure. Bone folder. God. It's become a thing now to make sure that that's oh, stuck well. Right, okay. So now we want to make this look tidy. All right. Sorry, I'm just reading suit. I'm not, do you know what? I'm not even going to go there. Right, so we need to mitre these corners. These don't have to be kinky mitered unless you have a burning desire to do that. And we are going to fold each of these pieces in so that we've got a nice crisp edge. I like to start with the outside bits first, the end bits even. And I'm going to first of all train my paper to go where I want it to go, which means I fold it. And I'm going to just use my bone folder just to get a bit of a good burnished edge on that. OK, so that's folded over like that. I've got a little piece of double sided tape on there because I like to make sure that it's going to stick well. So I'm going to use wet glue, but I want to make sure that it sticks without me having to sit here and hold it for hours on end. So that's why I use just a little piece of double sided tape there. OK, so that end's done. This end's a bit narrower because I was so determined to get that picture in. But it's done in exactly the same way. So I'm going to fold that over. I'm going to use a little piece of double sided tape just there. Doesn't matter that it overlaps onto the grey board at all. And I'm going to put a little bit of grey glue and pop that there like that. Okay? So now at either end I've got some nice sharp edges for my book. Now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to fold each of these in. We could do it all in one go, but because we've got these, these bits already, you know, kind of broken up for want of a better description, um, it makes it a little bit easier. So how are we going to get a really, really, really sharp corner on here without... Uh, without showing the grey board underneath. Now there's a million and one ways to do this. Um, I tend to fold it and then snip it. I'll show you that again in a minute. Um, but just so that I get a really, really sharp corner. So once again, I'm going to fold that over first, make sure it's in place and just burnish that so that what I've got there is my sharp corner. It's not lumpy underneath. But I've got a good sharp corner there. So a little bit of double sided tape. I will show you this bit again. Some wet glue where it matters and I'm going to fold that over there. And that double sided tape will hold it in place. Okay so on this side how did I do it? I've put my thumbnail underneath that that fold that we've got there and I just use my finger just to push that in a bit so that what I've got there is a nice sharp crease but then I've got this little knobbly bit here and if I fold that now that little knobbly bit is going to be in the way because it's going to make my, my fold look bulky so all I'm going to do is snip it off this is it, it's there's lots of ways of doing this and I have to tell you I've been making books for over 20 years and I still haven't found a foolproof way but I can show you what's worked for me but there are so many ways to do this but the books always look so much nicer when you do get that sharp corner I think okay so there we go I've got a nice corner there and there and on that side as you can see we've got sharp corners there too right so now I'm going to do this end in exactly the same way I'm just going to fold that down a little bit like that I can see there where I need to snip off I'm actually going to use my little scissors for this because the big ones just get in the way. Judith, which book are you planning on making? What have you got in mind? Because I was saying at the beginning we're going to be starting a big 10 by 10 inch book in here next week. 
so if you want to join us at seven o'clock uk time next thursday we will get started on a big book and it'll be exactly the same sort of class you'll work along with me like this but if you want to join us you will be very very welcome and i will take you through everything it'll be hidden hinge binding we'll be building the book up from scratch making the pages and we will be decorating as well okay right I don't mind if you're late, Julianne. It's nice that you're here at all. Hi, Emma. Right. OK, so that's the other end done. So once again, I've got some nice sharp corners there on my book. So now I just need to fold these over. double-sided tape just to keep it in place whilst the glue dries God, what a messy crafter I am okay and then the same on the other side fold that over that was the paper, it wasn't me. I never follow my own instructions, Mark. No, I know. Well, that's because I can't read my own writing. Oh, hi, Linda, how you doing? Right. There we go. Fold that over. And there we have the outside of our little book covered. Now, if I want to get really arty farty, what I could do now is actually put a strip over these joins. And because Kaiser Craft papers are so nice, they usually give you strips of stuff. So let's see, I could have fancy ones or I'm sure I saw earlier. Yes, there's some strips here. I might put some of those on. have a look just want to make sure it's not going to cover that bit because it will just look a mess right so that's the inside of my book and that's the outside I wonder Oh, that's a pity. That would have been great. Right, I'll do it this way round. So think about it. When it folds up, that's going to go there. You're going to do this. Make sure that you get glue right to the edges of your paper or use double-sided tape. Otherwise, it will lift and you'll end up with a wobbly book and you don't want that. Trust me. I was going to fold that round there and there. Just snip those off. I don't need those bits. And that bit is going to go that way round. Oh, gluey fingers. Ugh. Let's just make sure that's not going to go. It is. Let's put that there. And fold that round. Okay. So what that's done, that's purely 
aesthetic it's not for any other reason but now that's basically covered over those those lines that I have had right okay so now what we want to do is cover the inside of this so I know that that's three inches you can do this one of two ways you can either cover it in one whole strip like I did but just bear in mind that you run the risk of some bubbling or you can cut bits out here and then if you want to colour in these bits here just use a sharpie or something I'm going to do <coughs> mine slightly differently tonight and whereas on the one that I made before I covered it all in one piece which worked perfectly well but it did go a bit bobbly at the corners I'm actually going to cover each bit separately so let me choose some paper for the inside and I'm going to cut this at just under where are the papers I've just cut? Right, this happens to other people, doesn't it? You just cut something and then you can't find what you've just cut. I cut some bits off, didn't I? Oh well. So that is going to measure three by, did I say three and three quarters? I did, didn't I? So I'm going to cut that just under three and three and three quarters. And then I'm going to glue that on there up to where that gap is. And I'm going to make sure that I've got glue right up to the edges. I'll have to touch it again. Oh God. And I'm going to glue that there. Up to that edge. Ugh. All right, so you can see what I've done there. And now I'm going to cover each of these bits as well. So I'm going to need two that are just under half an inch by three inches. Let's have a look. Make sure that fits on there. Yep. That across there that's a pity so just under three what did I say the back bit was four and a quarter wasn't it I'm just going to cut that under four and a quarter. Like that. that one that goes in there see if I can get it up the right way like I said if you don't like to see the gaps you can always color them in with a sharpie you can just use your your paper to go all the way down if that's what you want to do it's entirely up to you oh look at that miracle that fits really well. Sometimes these things just work out. Look at that. That was luck rather than judgment, I can assure you. I'm going to find out it's upside down now.
yeah I'm gonna have to put that upside down otherwise when I open it up it'll be the wrong way around <laughs> you have to think of these things now, I know this looks upside down but it's really not and I'll show you why in a minute okay now normally if Sam's here Sam will tell you that under no circumstances will I allow you to uh, bend your books until this is absolutely fully totally and utterly dry however tonight we're actually not going to have a lot of opportunity to do that so now if I'm very 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 careful I can fold up this book and that is my cover made okay Ooh. so if you do it too quick you can crack you can crack your um oh, I'm sticky you can crack your papers but that's basically that's the outside of my book now that's done so I've got my little um, uh, pockets what I need to do now is make the binding system that will attach them to the book so grab a piece of paper I use pattern paper just out of what I've been using um, and I want you to cut a piece of paper that is uh, let me see if I can remember or read. or read well I've written this is what I've written I am not promising that this is right but what I've written is I want you to cut one piece by two and three quarters by four and a quarter inches two and three by four and a quarter inches so it's not very big Let's see if I'm right, shall we? So exciting to find these things out. So what I want you to do is I want you to score on the four and a quarter inch side at quarter of an inch increments. So I'm going to cut, cut score a quarter of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, one inch. You don't need to write this down, Mark. It's just, just yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, two, two and a quarter. It's every quarter of, quarter of an inch. You don't need me to tell you the measurements. It's just every quarter of an inch. Okay. Oh, it's put me. It'll teach me to press too hard. All the way to the end. Okay. So. What I've got is a piece of paper with all of those score lines on them, all at a quarter of an inch, okay? Now, what I want you to do now is fold it like an accordion. Now, I did it so that my coloured piece was on the outside and that was the first piece that I folded. So I folded it up like that, okay? Then I'm going to fold it back on that score line. So I'm making a concertina or an accordion fold or whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going backwards and forwards on my score lines. All the way along. OK. concentrating because I've got my tongue between my teeth I can feel it okay so keep going all the way along Until you get to the end. Can you repeat the score lines? Every quarter of an inch, record. I can't tell if you're winding me up now. Every quarter of... Hello, Axel! Every quarter of an inch. So on the 
four and a quarter inch side, you're going to score at quarter of an inch, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, one inch, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, two, two and a quarter, two and a half, etc., etc. So you've, you, you're going to end up with these these folds that are are, are at quarter of an inch. Okay. All right. Is that all right, Rekka? Maltesers. What have I missed? Oh, okay. All right, so now we've got our nice little accordion fold here. Right, now the next bit is the hardest bit of all. You have to decide what order you want your pockets in. This is easier said than done, trust me. This is the worst bit, okay? So decide what order you want your pockets in. I don't know. I don't want I want that one in the middle somewhere. I'm going to do it that way. Okay, right, so this is where I started. I've got my fold up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue. I'm going to try and put some glue on both sides of that fold there. I'm going to slot in this pocket with the opening at the top. I'm going to slot it in there and I'm going to fold that round so that I have glued glued it like that, okay? So now that first those first two folds of my accordion I have now glued to either side of my pocket. Okay? Now I'm going to put some glue on the next two folds, the next two flappy bits. And I'm gonna get my next pocket and I am going to pop that into where that score line is. Make sure it lines up with that pocket that I've already put in there. And I'm gonna fold that round. So now I've got two pockets attached. And can you see they're attached inside that accordion fold? So where I've got all my accordion folds here, Inside each of them, I'm going to glue a pocket. So I've got a pocket there, glued, and I'm going to put the next pocket there. So can you see, they're all kind of joining together at the bottom. So I'm going to do exactly the same with that one. Make sure it lines up. And I've now attached it to the binding, which is that inside that accordion at the bottom. And I'm going to do that with each of my pockets so that they all line up. OK. To be honest, you're not going to see this binding, so it doesn't matter which way round you do it. Not my idea, Mel. Well... I, I, just, I, said, I don't know actually how you do put these together. I just saw a picture and I just thought I'd give that a go. I'm probably doing it completely wrong, but it worked for me, to be honest with you. I'm sure somebody's got a better idea of how to do it. But it did, like I said, it did work for me as a binding system for this. It's probably not as mobile as it should be. But it, it, does, it does seem to do the trick as far as this little book goes. OK, so nearly there, just going to glue that in. And then the last one, and you'll notice that we have a flap on the end. So that's the last one of my pockets attached. So now... I've got all my pockets attached like that, okay? And you'll have, it'll do like a little fan shape. And each one of these is in between this accordion fold that we've done at the bottom. Dead easy. And then we've got this one little flap at the back. Okay? Not my idea, Mel. Um, Sue, this is as old as the hills. This is as old as the hills. 
I have never come up with a binding system that is my own at all. I've, you, you just read, there's so many different binding systems out there that, you know, there is something that will suit every book and every person. And I think different books suit different systems. Um, but that, that, you know, I mean, how long have we been making books for as a, as a human race? A few hundred, a few hundred years. So we've had time to think of some, but I suspect we may be, um, we may be out of luck now. We may have designed them all. OK, so we've got this little flap at the back here. Now, when we attach this to our book, we're going to attach it at the front here and we're going to attach it by that flap there at the end. So I'm just going to pop some glue here on that bit. And this is the bit that I'm going to attach here. Now, watch carefully because I'm only going to do this once. I am going to attach that, so that flap's now folded down with the glue on it and I am going to centre my pockets left to right in my book and this, the bottom, is going to be right at the bottom of the book, okay? Can you see that? So here is where that folds round there, that's the front of my book and I've just attached it with that little flap there. OK, and, but I've centred it side to side. So that is how I have attached my book. OK, now if you want to, you can leave it there. It works perfectly well like that. But I thought I'd be clever. I don't know why. Uh, and what I did uh, was I put some glue on that, that bit at the front. And I actually folded this round and attached it at the front. So that when I open my book... You might have to hold this for a moment in place because the pockets are slightly, slightly narrower than the front of the book. You might have to just hold it until it glues. But when I open my book, I want it to fan open. OK, so does that does that make sense to everybody? So in theory, this won't be dry yet, so it might not work. But in fit, no, it's not dried. Let me just put some more glue on it. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute while this is just gluing. I want that to attach to the front of my book. So when I open it, oh, when it's dry and I open it, I had this trouble last night. When it's dry and I open it, it will give you that fan like on my original one. So that's going to, you know, that opens with a fan because it's attached at the front. That's entirely up to you. So whilst I'm holding this, I'm going to tell you about that. These are the tags that I made to go inside each of the pockets. And you're going to need eight of these. And these are two and a half by four inches. OK, so two and a half by four inches and you're going to need eight of those. But if you want to get fancy, get fancy because you could fold them. You could make them all different sizes. You could make, you know, use your dies to make tag shapes. You could you could do anything you like. You can make little booklets to go in each of these these pockets. It's entirely up to you. So how are we going to keep it closed? Well, this was genius on my part, I have to say. And what I did was um, I used a hairband. So this is just band. yeah a hairband. This is just an ordinary hairband, and all I did was I just folded it round, and that's what kept my book together. Okay, this hasn't got any um, what's it's in it, so it's a bit flat at the moment. You could, if you wanted, make a belly band. If you don't have any of the the hair bands, you could make a belly band to go round out of paper. Um, you could put it that way round. There's you know you could add a little charm to it. There's all sorts of things that you can do. But basically, let's see if this has worked. See if it's dried enough. I'm doubtful. Oh. It. There you go. That goes near enough. It's not quite dry. But you can just put your little tags in there. And then just decorate it up to your heart's content. And there is your little book. So I hope you've enjoyed making that with me tonight. I'd love to see what you make. So if you want to put them um, in the group when, when they're done, it would be lovely to see them. Um, and please do join me next Thursday at 
seven o'clock when we will start our big 10 by 10 book but watch out um either at the end of the weekend or the beginning of next week and i will put up some pictures of the completed 10 by 10 so that you can see and have an idea what uh, we're going to be doing next week um like I said, in terms of what you need, I'm going to be using 12 by 12 pattern papers to decorate my book. Um, and we will be using um, 12 by 12 uh, plain cardstock to make the pages, as well as some A4. And you're going to need some 10 by 10 um, bits of uh, chipboard as well. So just bear that in mind when you are getting your stuff together. Right guys, uh, I'm a little bit over time, five minutes, which is quite impressive, I think. Thank you so much for joining me this evening and I will see you all next week. Take care everybody. Bye. Ooh.